I just look at AI as the quintessential automate the manual processes, right? Anything that's manual and repeatable, you should be looking at automating. When I saw the deep fake, I also at the same time saw this thing where I could upload several hours of my voice, which we have because yeah. these are separate tracks. And then it could mimic from text, like with inflection and all of this stuff, uh, creepily accurate. And so I said, okay, well, they've got the video and I've got hundreds of hours of a video of me and my face and my movements. And I've got hundreds of hours of clean, crisp SMB7 audio. How long until I can make a digital twin of Joel that could run an interview with chat GPT questioning and the other Ooh. person doesn't know? Wow. Because I want to see if I could put myself out of business, right? Like, how do you do that? So that's an interesting thing. That's the biggest fear, right? With with AI, everybody's afraid of losing their jobs. And I and I was talking to somebody about this this week. In fact, an interview candidate, I was talking to him about it. Like, hey, how do you think AI is going to disrupt your industry? And I said, it will. There's there's no doubt about it. Um, and for things that don't require legal terminology, medical terminology, it can be very disruptive right now. Um, but what I said was, and it's, and it's exactly along the lines of what you just said is, this is only going to help us do other things, right? So, you know, go back to like multiplicity of the movie. What you just described as multiplicity, you're like, well, crap, I can run my business based off of a deep fake of me with all this audio, asking the right questions. And at the same time, I'm going to be over, you know, having family time or, you know, doing the next adventure or the next, you know, business that I want to start. That's how I look at it too, is, you know, robots have been replacing humans forever. And yet, you know, you, we talked about this earlier, yet we're at 3% unemployment, which is like unheard of. So it's not replacing everything. Uh, we're coming up with different ways to better use our time. And so I just look at AI as the quintessential automate the manual processes, right? Anything that's manual and repeatable, you should be looking at automating. That's a portion of it. Like it's certainly a stretch, you know, to to say that. But if there's ways in which I can have Chat GBT or the next evolution of that start to replace, um, you know, certain functions of my life, hell yeah, I'm all in, right? Because you know, my brain works twenty plus hours a day, and I'd love to be doing, you know, I, I'd love to be putting my mind to other things with the knowledge that, you know, I can. Uh, execute more effectively by using a software system such as that to do some remedial tasks. Have like, you bounced example, ideas off of GPT? Like oh, problem I have, solving? Yeah. Did it yeah, come up with anything good or no? Uh, it came up with some high level stuff. So I've, I'd been toying with building something on, on my end. Um, so I'm an avid collector. I'm a huge vinyl collector and, um, I used to always catalog everything and, um, uh, I've gotten really lazy in my cataloging because I'm, I'm rarely home. And it's, it's, a uh, it's something that takes my focus, um, because I'm super meticulous, like, you know, vinyl comes with inserts and all this kind of stuff. And the way that I catalog everything, I want it to be very specific about, uh, exactly what I have, including condition. And so <clears throat> I wanted to start developing a QR code system to where, as I receive it, you know, it's basically an inventory management system. I can produce the QR code, um, based off of the UPC, if there is one, or potentially based off of uh, scanning the image of the record itself, and then automatically converting that into the essentially the database record for my inventory on an AWS S3 bucket. Uh, and so I I asked ChatGPT, I said, build this for me, and I was really shocked at how detailed and step driven it got. But in the matter of 15 seconds, I had 25 different steps of, you know, how to go about configuring it in the console, recommendations on the specific AWS services that they would use that they, um, that, you know, you should yeah. use to be able to build it. And from a high level architecture, it was pretty damn accurate. Um, so, and that was a pretty ambiguous ask, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So I was, I was digging it. And that's why I said, you know, that's why I started looking at him like, well, crap, like, let's start using this as code reviews. Code reviews is one of my biggest blockers. You know, um, it's a resource constraint. Nobody wants to do it. It's administrative work. If I could use that as, as my code review engine, I'd save 
you know, at least 15 hours a week uh, of engineering productivity. So that's where I want to get into it. And then plus, you know, like I said, doc documentation is always a, a, a challenge. So, you know, w I'd, I'd love to be able to just automatically produce documentation for our, uh, our architecture and, and good software documentation. And infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. Good documentation, good right? documentation that yeah. basically just generate automatically generates, you know, a knowledge base for any engineer that's coming on board. And it's like, by the way, go over here, done. You don't have to worry about, you know, spending time with uh, another engineer, saving me some pair programming time, all that kind of stuff. So I see a definite opportunities of in incorporating that into our natural workflow.